right, we're kind of starting early to start recording, talking about random stuff, and we'll get to the time travel shortly. I'm Leopard Messiah slash Casey Venator. This is Player Politics, and today is neither. We're going to talk about a random subject, time travel. I'm talking with a couple of my friends. I'm using their Discord. We've got Vasky, we've got Honkerton, and we may have a couple other people join. Hopefully the audio stays decent. Uh, you want to link your YouTube channel? So I may follow? Um, since my account has not been authorized to go live yet, I did not know I had to do that. It's going to be recorded and then posted. Cool. And Sounds it's good. not like it matters too much. I'm the only one with a face. Ugly it may be. I actually had to jerry-rig my, well not jerry-rig, but because of how my camera used to sit, and I'm not a really big fan of like having it so awkward when I'm looking at the game, and I don't like staring at the camera the whole time because I can't do anything. So I had it sitting on a paper towel roll, <laughs> kind of at the center of my keyboard, so that way there's minimal, like when I look one to the other monitor, it doesn't look too bad. Nice. So, and since I want to have, have the conversation while gaming, it just makes more sense. Sounds good to me. But, you know, and before we get on the topic, and we're actually recording now, kind of we'll work our way into the time travel, but to go back to the topic of the of the worldwide launch, I've actually been hoping for this for years, especially as server technology has matured, they have the rel the zone sharding and the realm sharding and the server sharing, etc. I don't see a logical reason why it took so long for them to get there. I mean, Legion launch, even though it was at 3 a.m. with like 9 million players logging in, I had practically no issues other than some leg stretching, which is yeah. But not uncommon. Right. And you're you're going to get that with any form of launch. Um I'm really excited actually for this launch. I've been I've been waiting for this kind of expansion cuz there's like this massive troll focus and I'm like, yeah. You're right. In before Vasky original troll. Hell yeah, dude. If we're going to like talk about trolls, oh my god. There I don't know what it is about troll males. But there's just something about their grittiness and like they're quirky and I love their the voice acting that's done everything about them, even all the way back to when I played vanilla and they're god awful and ugly and like 10 times worse than people see them today. I still love them so much. So yeah, no troll for life man. Same thing for classic servers. When they pop up, it's going to be troll male, and it's either going to be a troll male warrior or it's going to be a troll male shaman. One of the two. I don't know if any of you are going to be interested in classic, but I sure the heck am. I am. I don't care. My body's ready. They haven't released any information on it. I don't care. Give me the meat. Give me the cheese. Baby, give me classic. I have reservations about classic. Uh, mostly as, and, and, you know, we're going to start it by saying back when I was playing it. <laughs> Um, no, but, uh, for me, the problem is, is that while I have great memories of vanilla, I was a different player back then. You know, I was 24 years old. I just had work like to, to give a little bit of background. I don't want to take too long on it, but I was young. I was just out of the military. I was still starting to go through the VA. I was working, but that's all I really had. But I had a shitload of debt, so I couldn't go out much anyway. And so when WoW came out, like $15 a month, play unlimited all you want. I'm like, sign me the fuck up. And I right? love Warcraft. I grew up on Warcraft, the RTS. And so I was like, all right, let's do this. And so I started playing. And I could, and that back then, I could, what I would do basically is sleep at work on, off and on. And then I'd get home and then I'd game. I was playing WoW on average nine to 10 hours a day. And yep, that sounds about right with me, except I was a lot younger. I was PvP, I was doing 
everything just because the game was great. But the game is also very grindy. I played a rogue and a holy priest. And the and I will and I will say, and anybody who played because it's it's even different now than it was then. The difference in how you approach the game as a healer versus a DPS was so different. Oh yes, the game styles were completely interchangeable. And it's like the same way for like casters going to um like oh, for no, instance no, no. I'm mage speaking strictly about roles. I'm not talking about specific class, mm. I'm talking about roles in general. Just like DPS versus healing versus tank. Like as a DPS, oh yeah, I was grinding and doing quests and whatnot. As a healer, everybody and their mother was like, wanna do a dungeon, wanna do a dungeon? And like basically from level forty five to level sixty, I'd say half my leveling on my priest was healing the top was healing the groups that compose of the top two guilds on my server, which were Pain Train and All That Remains, because they were doing AQ forty and I was and they needed the nature resist cures and but none of their healers could be arsed to do it. So I'm like, well fuck it, I'll do it, you know. I know how to heal I know Pain Train. You know Pain Train? I'll make pain their own. Yeah, I know Pain Train. Um, I used shit, to you knew nice. raid in uh, Nightmares. Yeah. Holy shit! I had no idea. So wait, did, um, wait, did you play on Magdaradon? I did not. I knew a lot of people from there because um, I was in Nightmares Asylum in Vanilla. Oh damn! Okay. Originally Gurbashi, and then went to Smolderthorn. I was gonna say, but yeah, no, Pain Train. Pain Train was a great guild. Uh, what was your character name? My rogue was named Omicron, and my priest was named Bowchikabow. I know Bowchikabow. Yeah. Yeah, good character. <laughs> yeah, you know, you guys were were great. Um, AQ forty was a blast. All right, so I want to segue for a minute because I know I said we're not going to really talk about WAD, but I, it makes for a good segue because it's game related. But, Absolutely. Um, so I had a discussion with a friend of mine back when WAD launched because he was he was trying to wrap his head around how it was possible for us to be doing what we're doing using the infinite universe theory. And I was explaining to him because he didn't understand the difference in the timeline because he assumed that because we were going to an alternate uh, world or an alternate universe, an alternate timeline, that it would be the same. His assumption was that everything continued chronologically. And I was trying to explain to him that real life physicists believe that if you, if you accept the notion of infinite or alternate universes, then there must also be alternate timelines. I'm a believer that not all the timelines move at the same speed. I 100% agree with you on that in a science level. Um, and I feel like for in a in blizzard sense, it's completely the same way of like it was not completely at the same time of everything else of what went on. I think that the timeline that we went back into was it playing out in current motion. Compared to what we already went through. Well, but what's weird is when you if you really think about it, the point in time that Garrosh went through, right? And this is, you might, people listening to this will have to like write it down a little bit. But Garrosh goes through, through the sands. He has enough time from the time he leaves to the time we go through it, which is not very long. I mean, I think they said something in game time. It was like three months, three or six months, right? right? Now, in that three to six months, Whatever amount of time Garrosh spent on alternate Draenor had enough time to not only ingratiate himself with the with the clans, ingratiate himself with his own father as a stranger, and then, uh, you know, tell them about this technology or however you want, whatever term you want to use for it, the advancements, and build them. By the time we go through, like that's. A lot of time for six months. I'm I'm a believer that the time there, that not a time dilation, just a difference in how time re represented is represented between the two. I think that the six months for us was like two or three years for alternate Draenor. Hundred percent agree with you on that. 
And it's kind of crazy. Now, are we like, talking about inter- infinite timelines? Are we talking about basically about like a spider web of these timelines that are all kind of interlinked with each other? I mean, you could sense in a in a way say too that they're like linked, kind of how the like the ley lines are in Suramar and around Azeroth. I do not. I think they all function oh, like. independently. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. I definitely see it where they all are actually inter interlinked. I, the reason why I suspect that they're all independent is that if they were interlinked, I think we would have already stumbled upon them. Just, just the preponderance of information we have in the 20, just in the 21st century alone. I mean, the things that we're doing with regard to researching black holes, the research into varying levels of photons, uh, advancements in how we are able to perceive other galaxies all lend me to the to the belief that if something was connected even in us in an intergalactic sense i think we would have stumbled upon it because it would be so different from what we see normally okay okay that's interesting i definitely saw it for our universes to be more interlinked because the infinite dragon flights and whatnot and they're their play into things. Oh, you're talking but about. But I can the definitely game. see too where they're. I'm talking about in the game. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I thought we were transitioning to real life already. Um, with regard to the game, I absolutely believe they're interconnected. Uh, and the proof of that is how uh, various magic wielders are able to commune with different elements outside of Azeroth, like not casually. But it doesn't take an absurd amount of knowledge, I guess you could say. Right. Now, in real life, no, I think they're all completely separated. I think they're all like their own little bubble, like where people, for instance, say they like saw uh, ghosts or a sure, form of themselves. I'm not a li- I'm, my account isn't authorized for li- for YouTube live stream yet, so we're just doing recording and then I'll post it. I'm sorry, I'm catching up on the Shiny's chat channel. Oh yeah, no problem. Um, but oh, so now oh, when sorry. it comes when it comes to real life, um, yeah, I definitely think they're completely interchanged, but somehow linked. Um, how you like would see with like a bubble theory and whatnot. It's just that it, things get caught in what we would say like in our plane, um, and and get interlinked in some way that are not supposed to be there. And that's how people, for instance, like, say they saw ghosts or they saw a second me in, like, a weird spectral form. There's a lot of people that see a lot of things, and I think it's different universes all interlinking with each other, but not supposed to be interlinking. Kind of like how gravity works, where it, like, causes a bubble or a rift. Mm. That is interesting. But what, the reason why I suggest that they're completely independent, I mean, it's not like they're non-interactable. I just don't think that they intersect naturally. I think it takes a specific act to create a connection between the two. Kind of like you can accidentally fall, but you don't accidentally pick up a rock and throw it at someone. Okay. I like that. Now, on now with regard to, and I really wish I had a better like way of scheduling how I wanted the topic to go, but I'll just kind of run with it. The first thing I want to talk about is premise. What if you had to narrow it down to two types of time travel with regard to the effect on timeline, like not not even multiverse theory. If we stay in the same universe, but can go back or interact with elements of the past. For now, for simplicity's sake, we're going to not talk about going into the future, but instead just going to the past. Okay. Like, for example, uh, I believe in the parallel timeline theory and, well, as one theory, and my other theory is the, I'm already forgetting the name, basically that the moment you go back in time, the timeline is automatically altered. Like, even if you interacted with nothing, if you appeared, waited three seconds, and disappeared, you have already altered the timeline. That's the other theory I believe in. 
And I will agree with you on that. If you appear even just for a split second, I think you alter a timeline of what was predestined. Which brings up the question of why. You know, if you think about it, if you, if you, you know, the simple things like if a man if or if a person speaks in the forest and nobody's around, does it still make a sound? You know, Heisenberg's. I think it truly 100% makes a sound just because somebody doesn't hear it. There's going to be a low echo roar where somebody else is going to hear it. Even low, even though it's not going to be picked up, somebody's still going to hear it. Even if like their mind doesn't hear it or it doesn't register, somebody still it's going to reverberate in that universe. I know it's rude, but I'm eating while we're while we're recording. Oh, you're good. That's like what I do half the time, so nice. Right. Hey, am I allowed to join in? No. Yes. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hi, Sherv. I'm on my phone, so I hope that isn't sounding like crap. That's fun. Yeah, you'll be all right. It'll sound a little weird on the. It'll sound a little weird on the recording, but that's just. I'm gonna clean it up when I encode it. So, we'll start with the. We'll start with the. I'm just gonna call it the butterfly timeline effect. Which is the, the idea that as soon as you go back, that things change. So, the moment you go back, you know, do you, do you have a specific purpose or are you just doing it because the technology exists? And what would you hope to do? Like for me, for example, if I could go back in time, maybe I would decide to go back, and I know this is going to sound morbid, if I have the knowledge that I have, but I want to go back in time kill my former self at that time and then relive the life with the knowledge I have? Or would I just kind of observe and see things from the outside perspective? You know? Yeah, if I was going back in time, I don't think I'd have any interest in changing any sequence of events, whether it be my own or the events of the world around me. I would more like abuse it to kind of have infinite time to do what I want. Yeah, I agree with you, Sherview. I want to do whatever the heck I want. Like, for instance, um, have more time on World of Warcraft. What? <laughs> do you think I don't have enough time to play World of Warcraft? <laughs> but you'd have to use your account. Would you not? Yeah. That would require a really? kind of tertiary interaction with your current, with your old self. That's okay. You're Maybe not concerned I don't of have creating to a Fuck with myself then. Maybe. I mean, I'm a fan of paradoxes at times. Don't get me wrong. They can be fun, but. Hey, why can't I just create a second account for my time traveling self and let my other self like live their life? <laughs> How are you gonna pay for it? Well, you can tech just acquire money through other means. I don't I don't understand the limitations here. I think you can avoid a paradox while still living a living a double life and not intercepting with the other used life. I literally like when they're sleeping and there's downtime, like my other self is sleeping and I get on and I'm a quiet as a fucking mouse and I don't rage in the game trying to get fucking Grand Marshal on my Alliance character instead of me already getting fucking High Warlord on my horde, you know, because, you know, shit matters like that back in vanilla. And I was a busy kid still in high school trying to get straight A's so I can be Val Victorian, so. Priority. Wow. So the one thing you'd run into though is like identity theft issue. Like you don't really have an identity if you're a second you trying not to cross into your own paradox. It really does limit your options. Cool kids go back in time just to headbutt yourself in the face. Oh gross. See, I would like to that. think that I'm open minded. I don't know. Heading I never knew headbutting people was gross. 
I don't know. I just see blood coming out of it, and that's gross. <laughs> I would like to think that I'm <laughs> like open-minded enough that if my future self came to me and started talking, that I wouldn't just like go nuts or dismiss it out of hand. I welcome it. I'd be like, great. Oh my god, you're gonna get me the grand marshal. Sweet. Thank you. I need a nap. Well, more like hey, here's, the, here's the here's the winning uh, mega school. millions numbers for your 18th birthday. Because I mean, well, I mean that too. To, that works too. If I'm gonna stand at the bell, I might as well ring it, kind of thing. And I mean, and, and I then I'm gonna ring a lot things. of bells. Right. No, but what I mean is, you know, I've often when I think about it, and I think about time travel a lot. So, well, not directly time travel, but the idea of interacting with history, interacting with the past. And I like the idea of staying within my timeline, my lifeline, because that's something that I know. Like the idea of going back to 1985 when I was living in Dale City, seeing the house and all that back then, I'm okay with because I understand it and I know it. You're not going to see my ass go to, go to 1863 in the middle of the Civil War, you know? Okay, so I might get real raunchy here for a minute, but me, the cynical side of me in my brain right now is saying, go back in all the timelines and get to like Caesar, Constantinople, all of them, and touch all the historical dicks. Just touch them, you know, just a boop. That sounds like a, what yeah. a chick would do. A cynical I would. chick. <laughs> just to say, I, I, would. Just to say uh, I touched that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think about it. The guy would do the same thing, and then like, I touched um, what's her fucking name, Cleopatra's tits. They were great. Hey. And you would be summarily like, killed, which is another problem you run into. Any when you interact with something, that's why you bring a gun. Yeah, because that oh, that's an, and that's another thing. That's and, the and that's the another conversation. Well, no, 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 no. And then you find out Cleopatra was really an alien, and she incinerates you. No, 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 no. What? Okay. Well, it it goes into the next part of the. It goes to another part of the conversation. What do you bring back? Like technology is a very sensitive thing, in my opinion. Probably the most sensitive aspect of interacting with events. You know how we approach things with cell phones now compared to just ten years ago. You know, what would have happened if you say went back to to the time of the pharaohs and you had a cell phone? Or you had, you know, night vision goggles. I think cell phones like that really wouldn't change much because they wouldn't really have any concept of what that I was. I my Pokemon like, cards. Think about that. Like, hand a cell phone over to some Egyptian dude and be like, replicate that. He's not going to be able to. What you really need to do is to go back to ancient Egypt and be like, this is how you do iron stuff. Then you change stuff. They were already doing yeah. that, though, technically. They had well, go obsidian. Back or whatever. I mean, technically, they did have iron and whatnot, and they were actually one of the first pioneers. If we're actually well, going to get historically correct, they were the first pioneers to actually do proper surgical things. There's there's artifacts for it. They have obsidian and iron artifacts. Well, I mean, more so on, a, on a larger scale. Because during I mean, that yeah. time, something like an iron chariot was like a major deal. Like there's even a passage in the Bible let's not where basically the kind of stay off topic. Let's not get too far off. Well, I know, but like just changing that because little thing, like tablet. teaching them how to like mass produce iron equipment, like that would vastly change the world. That would change a lot of things. I, because and that's the thing. I think if I'm being really honest, that's the one thing that scares me the most in terms of interacting with time is if you introduce anything that accelerates anything, even, I mean, something as simple, for example, and Vasky will understand this, even something as simple as improving their irrigation. Let's say you went to Egypt and you improved irrigation just a little bit and gave them that little extra bump. That drought would have never happened and they would have, wouldn't have the uh, fall of the kingdom back then. If that had in career, there would have never and they would have thrived. And guess what? Greek and Roman empires would not have thrived then because of it either. Like Egypt would have stayed the top power. And there is the butterfly effect. 
See, and then I might just be like the the really ignorant and lazy type, but uh, I don't. If I went back in time, I don't think I would have the like effort. I wouldn't put in enough effort to really measure like how much I'm interacting and influencing the timelines. I would just be like not caring. I would just be like, yeah, I killed this bug, and then the whole world got uh, completely changed. But if you're just not even putting any thought into what you're doing, then it's kind of random anyway. And then I would just feel like it wasn't really my fault. Like, I do think certain major events, like if you change that you could create like a better future, but. Yeah, but I think if, if you try to calculate your actions in that way and try either to not change or try to change or change certain things, then you'd probably like that would probably mess with your head a lot like you'd probably get really stressed out about it i don't know i don't think i would want to go back in time unless i knew that i was like committed to not caring about the impact of my going back in time because that just sounds like not fun <laughs> i would also commit to not going back to my regular timeline i think and i think that's something that I think if you're going to go and you know you're going to do something or you believe that you may commit actions that have an effect, you need to accept the idea that you're not going to want to go back to to where you started because it will be fundamentally different. Uh, I want to go to the same area where my family is even at, in, at any point in time. If you like, think about it with this, really uh, though, if you're taking into account all three universes, uh, you could technically go back to your own timeline it'll be exactly the same because well right now we're sticking to all you'd be universe. doing is creating a different well i know but you'd be creating a new tangent i don't think you're necessarily changing when you exist and you're basically pulling yourself out of it and placing yourself in a different situation the only thing that's going to change now is your original timeline does not have you anymore which brings up the next question is it possible that the reason why we know time travel doesn't exist is because nothing is as it is? Like, for example, w it, the moment that I go back in time, right? Now, in that moment, I believe that I've created a temporal loop within my life cycle. Now, when I go, now if I were to go back, let's say I changed something. Maybe I did something that had an effect on my life, right? Like I went and I changed the test score so that I got a better grade. And let's say that had fundamental impacts down the road. I would not know the effects. And this is gonna, this is crazy, but imagine going back to your timeline and you have no memories that span up to that point because your interaction at that point changes any number of things moving forward. And, you know, in the, in the Butterfly Effect movie, they show him with the nosebleed and getting these new memories. I don't actually think that would happen, which worries me a lot. In my opinion, if you went back to whatever situation you were in, I think, I don't think you'd step into the shoes of yourself. I think you would just be there and whoever you are is going to be there as well. Right, which is why it becomes a temporal loop, because now... You, your timeline has stopped moving forward at the moment you went back in time. Uh, we think that, but it well, yeah, might I mean, these are all assumptions, not. technically. Like, we, you could very well just step into it, and in the eyes of everybody else in your, in your universe, you just wink that of existence. You're gone. And if you never return there, you just you just end up being like a missing person. It's that's the only thing that changed. I don't think, I don't really think it's an assumption. I don't think you're going to be like everything freezes in your timeline because you're not there anymore. I think that's, I think that's really, no no no, really no. not everything, just you. If you, the moment you step through that machine or whatever the apparatus that sends you back in time, as of that moment, your life is now in an unending loop until you come back. That's what I'm saying. The world around you con continues to move. It's just you that is separated technically from the linear timeline until you're returned. Or at least until you move to a different timeline. I don't, th what, I don't think 
people are chained to things. I don't, I don't think you're chained to your timeline. I think if you move to another timeline, you're just there. No, no, you're not going to another timeline. You're going back into your... your okay, I'll clarify. For the purposes of the discussion, we have a single timeline that can be interacted with and changed, but it is still a single timeline. Like the timeline we have now, mm -hmm. if at this moment I step through, I am still in my timeline. I'm simply, it's simply being altered by my presence. So not multi Yeah, it's still touch multi all the mature theory. penises. Right. <clears throat> so, and uh, some of it is for simplicity's sake because doing it other ways could end up with like 36 hour conversations that go all kinds of places. But, yeah. Not to mention, I'm trying to stay within the realm of assumptive knowledge that I have in terms of, you know, just the. Th what is practically theoretical. There's a point where, yes, I'd be a raunchy son of a bitch going back in time. I'd be like, okay, all the mature penises that are of legal age, let me touch you. And that's fine. That's my choice. You know, you guys have your thing. I'm going to tell you right now, though, I don't think I'd want to be in the same timeline as my family though like or me technically if we really want to think about it because i'd be like okay i'm gonna go back in history i want to i want to meet the people who wrote guilt and mesh and touch their wieners and you know a lot of things there's a lot of like old history that i want to see and i kind of want to see ancient mesopotamia and how it is with kota hammurabi and how they came up with things because i mean that was gonna go back time. in time and make a photo album with polaroids of dicks in history yep what if you just yeah, like, man. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. You make Facebook accounts for all of these old <laughs> dead icons. The situation would be set up the infrastructure to have Facebook stuff. I was just kidding. I mean, could yeah. though, you can go back in time, get their true accurate information and make great Tinder profiles. As someone who loves alt history, though, I don't think I'd be able to stop myself from, like, fucking with shit. I, you know what? I would love if I had the ability to stop from Pompeii from happening. I would. Is that sad? Uh, I'd feel like a way larger scope. I think if the time really came, I'm not sure if I would want to. Like, I think, you know, I do, I think the same things that other people do. Like, you know, you could kill Hitler or, you know, kill Pol Pot, prevent Tiananmen Square, prevent Pearl Harbor. But I then I have to think about, well, what did those things, how did those things affect the future in terms of development? If you stopped Pearl Harbor, we might not, you know, we wouldn't have dropped the bomb. We wouldn't have stopped World War II. What would have happened if the bomb was used in other places? If Pearl Harbor didn't happen, what if we didn't learn any technological lessons or communications lessons, which would have an effect on today? You know what I mean? I think right. I'd try to stop the fall of the Byzantine Empire. That's an really? interesting idea. Of all the empires, Byzantine, really. It's an interesting one. I mean, yeah, and uh, I mean, all of them have a form of violence in it, but boy, I don't know about the Byzantine era. I've got one for you. Because I don't think the Roman Empire, you could have, something that big at that time period, you couldn't save it. How about if we had, how about if going back and then preventing the Arabic uprising in the 50s that caused Iraq and those countries to literally regress? I mean, there was um, a time. Yeah, I hundred. Are you talking about that, like in the sixties? And earlier. Talking about the Iranian Islamic Revolution. I'm, or the Iraqi one when uh, Saddam or the when the Shia took over. Because remember, yeah. Iraq used what used to be like the center of cosmopolitan thought in terms of mathematics and science. They were very uh, their culture looking at it didn't seem that dissimilar from ours like if you see videos from israel and iraq and iran in the 50s and 60s 
it looked similar to the United States in the 50s and 60s. Women had more rights over there and everything. All right. I can actually go back further than that. Um, shortly before, not shortly, but a bit before the uh, World War One, a bunch of Islamic scholars were trying to uh, reform the religion. They were bringing along a lot of new ideas. And uh, in fear of losing influence ah, you're over breaking up, dude. Uh, the Middle East. One second. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You were getting digital for a bit. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Basically, the uh, bunch of these Islamic scholars were trying to reform the religion. And the Ottomans, in order to not lose control over the region, like, they, well, they fear that they lose control because all these people are getting, like, fancy new ideas. They went and killed them all. So, because of that, you now have a much more um, archaic version of Islam. And that's what's caused a lot of issues in the, in the region. Like, they could have had their own uh, Enlightenment era, like the oh, yeah. Shandy did. And they, they did have their own Enlightenment it. era. Oh, I know. There was a, it, would have, it would have been a second one. Well, what they needed, instead of just an Enlightenment, was they... The Islamic religion, in my opinion, in the 20th century was in... And still is in dire need of a Reformation. I, I think that while there are elements of mainstream Islam that are being practiced, that are, you know, for the good... I think if they could do, if we could do a better job of uh, taking the elements out of Islam that glorify or allow someone to interpret it as glorifying the violence and homophobia and other elements and the unforgiveness and all of that, I think it would do better. I'm okay with them ha with their religion being fundamentally different from others. As an atheist, I don't have a a boned, you know, I don't have a bone in the fight, so to speak, but give me a second, I'm trying to find the words. Uh, come on. I think that they could have f uh, redone it in such a way where the idea, like when you, if you, re, if you talk to the average person, you know, ask them about what Islam is, they'll tell you two things. One, it talk, they talk about prayers and mosques, and then the other, they talk about terrorists, which is a problem, right? Because we're all binary thinkers. And I don't want to get too far into this because it goes away from the time travel. But with regard to why yeah. I would go back to do the Reformation is because to give that religion a chance to be able to present itself as better than it was, similar to what happened in the Reformation and Enlightenment of Christianity. You know, instead of it being associated with the Old English and how, you know, and the, the kind of king then king of kings ideal, it became more of the faith and do what is morally right, etc. You know, the idea of, you know, getting rid of the idea of apostates. That was the thing that got me, the, that gets me the most every time is why, you know? I think Islam is the only religion in which you, if you leave the religion, it is said to kill them. That's crazy to me. I think they did it in Christianity too, like old, 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 old school Catholicism, but it didn't kill. It was just you were in prison for false, for believing in a false deity if you didn't believe in Catholicism. That another thing too is. Um real big thing with um with catholicism is you bought your way to heaven too which was really fucked up or you yeah. literally had like papers like deeds buying yourself into heaven which was a really fucked up way of going about things yeah i mean i'd love to, to talk about the religions and old religions and all that stuff but we're talking time travel yeah we'll have that discussion at some point i love having that discussion but okay so going back to to time traveling Here's let's change pace a little bit, right? We're going to set this up so that it stays structured. For this part of the discussion, the the primary rules are: when you go back in time, 
your old, your previous self remains, but instead of you simply going back and being a person, you go back to where you were. Like, you basically inhabit your old self, and you carry the knowledge and what you are. What would you do? I don't think I'd want to participate in that kind of time travel. So let me think for a second if I had to, what I would do. Why would, what problem would you have with it? It feels like I'm erasing a person. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, I don't think yeah. I'd want to be a part of that. Really. Yeah, that sort of time travel would be, and they actually explore that in life. To strange, us, it, that's not up to us to take something away. Well, what do you, you're not taking away from others, you're, and you're not technically taking away from yourself. You're going back to your former yeah. self with the not with knowledge. Uh, you so you're saying you're going back to your formal timeline. Huh? So you're saying you're, yeah. returning, you're returning to your own timeline. Right. You're not, you're not going to another one and stepping into their shoes. Exactly. Okay, that's fine. But if you're like, like they did this in Life is Strange. If you haven't played that, it's good. But basically, you, they ended up going back in time, whatever, but they ended up stepping into another version of themselves' shoes. And they didn't really realize that until like way too late. Yeah. And they were basically leaving behind just a trail of like, destruction over timelines like okay in this timeline i was a real asshole to somebody because i didn't get something done and i basically destroyed that version of me's like school and well that's like, not what we're doing we're staying in the same timeline yeah so and if it was the same timeline i don't know um as like are you saying nothing changes you just go into another timeline nothing changes you look at all this stuff and you go back oh no 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 when you inhabit and when you inhabit yourself with your knowledge that things are going to change because okay i'm like what you're doing right now at this very moment if the future you came back your conversation would be different because your future self would be talking not you you have essentially taken over your old self that's what i'm saying all right so yeah, going back in time as you like going back in time into a time when you're still alive right and then you have then you take over your old self so there's only ever one of you yeah and i don't i don't like the idea of that because it feels because, like yeah, yeah it feels stepping, like i'm yeah go on sorry yeah because Prior to engaging in that type of time travel, that previous version of myself existed, and then after going back and replacing it, it doesn't exist anymore. Like, what happens to that version of me? It's right. like being written out of the timeline. So I don't like that. I don't like it either for the fact of what about the experience? Like, we have a certain memory intake. We want, we choose what we want to remember. What if there was something important in that time of like that like i somehow didn't remember or was something insignificant that ended up being significant later and that character that i or my old self that i took over all of a sudden doesn't have that minuscule information that is vital down the road but because you will it's have something that small that minuscule because that, you've already experienced not it. necessarily not necessarily with the human mind because the human mind retains only so much of what you want to remember it's a pick and choose with your brain really yeah you can that's a good point basky because even with this setting that you've um suggested alu like technically going back in time over and over and over and over and over again isn't just going to infinitely increase your brain's capacity like that's not how that would work right it really doesn't and it is it's be your brain from as a child you pick and choose what you want to remember and there's things out of my childhood i remember and there's others that gets washed out to the side because it was like daily today basis but you don't really truly don't remember that and if you're going to another timeline that maybe barely has even has a hold on that it's snuffed out and it's taken away and it's become a 
part of this weird walk. Um, I don't know. I don't think I would like it. Because you could be having one little remnant of a memory slightly barely holding on being remembered and then it gets you come in where you've already either forgotten it or whatever and it's already been taken and snuffed out and now there's these new memories that possibly can unfold and it's just like how is that how is that productive development and advancement i don't see it as that well if the concern is of forgetting if, then she... it's not even exactly forgetting it's it's certain minuscule memories that turn into possibly that should have been vital down the road. Like it's, for instance, like taking a test or um, remembering a vital detail, how to save somebody's life, et cetera, and so forth. Like if you're a doctor and doing that, like sometimes that gets snuffed out in memory and how it gets snapped out and how you so retain information. So you don't think that you don't, so you don't so think don't the know. information that you retained would remain just because you have more memories? Mm, no. Well, I'm, like, if we're going back and we have all the knowledge that we have now, right, then we right. can't possibly also have all the knowledge that we had then in that moment. And there's definitely things that we have lost over the time. Like, if I went back to my fourth grade self and had to write a test that I didn't study for in this timeline, just like Vasky said, for, like, a really easy example, I wouldn't remember that stuff. But, you know, that's a microcosm of, of much bigger situations that you could make different decisions based on this new information you have because you're missing old information and it's not necessarily for the best it's just kind of like messing with yourself yeah or like when it comes to like divorce and you truly don't even know truly yourself like if you're not truly developed and really like knowing who you are and you're trying to figure out how to fix this divorce you're literally going to go in an infinite time loop of basically um making mistakes constantly over and over and over again and then how do you go back from there? Like once you've done that, it's there's kind of like, how would there, the undo button work if you've already erased that version of yourself? Well, then that would be, well, perhaps that interaction is the consequence. No, like, I guess that's something that should have been established early on that, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There is, there are, everything has consequences. The act of going back in time, maybe if it's not something that's you know, like a Fitbit on your wrist or something that tethers you to the future, maybe when you go back, that's a one way trip. Remember, I mean, this is all still theoretical, so, you know, we can almost make it up as we go in a, I hate using the term realistic sense, but in a not so far left field. Because that is one thing that's been prevalent in almost every time travel theory or idea or TV show or anything, like any reference. You know, a, a good example of outside of that, of course, is Quantum Leap. But that would be a whole different discussion. But you, know, you had Time Cop. Time Cop had a watch for bringing the criminals back. Or in the, in the special dark. You had... Uh, you know, back to the future with the DeLorean, where it was a device that was constantly with you that you could use to interact with the timelines. You know, maybe for the maybe for the purposes of the discussion, decide if you want something that can bring you back. But I think that you know you ha we have to accept the premise that if we if we go and inhabit our bodies, that the consequence will be that either they gain the knowledge that we had, like we can't just take it away, or that there that our minds just kind of reset and then we deal with the consequences in the future yeah i'm trying to think if there's any kind of limitation or any kind of thing i can impose that would allow um me to think that going back and replacing a version of myself would be something i would ever do and i can't think of anything like i'm pretty sure i would only ever touch time travel if it was like a duplicate self you know like you're your old self is still there and then you're going in and introducing a second you totally cool with that but the second it's like replacing a me i'd like no not with a 10 foot pole but i don't I'm, yeah. but i i don't get a clear sense of why that specifically like you know i like to think that i'm i'm roughly the same person that i was throughout the years i mean obviously puberty 
there were some changes and behavioral changes. But overall, I'm, I'm not a fundamentally different person than I was back then. And the idea of switching well, memories, you know what? If I was being completely honest, some of the sh and, and I know this is getting personal, but some of the shit I've seen in life, I would gladly get rid of. And if the process of going back in time allows me to, to get those out of my head during that time, I think I would have improved my life. Interesting. See, now, I wouldn't change anything in my whole entire life, and I've seen some major things change. But the thing is, is where I'm getting at is that I change as a person every day. I learn something new every day. I experience something new every day. Let it be minuscule. Let it be vast. Um, and I think even just coming on to a day that seems normal can have a huge impact because not everybody learns every something, something every day, but I strive to. So, I mean, I, I feel like going into my life and doing that and snuffing one day out can be detrimental. I agree. Uh, I can totally see your point of view, Alice. Like, if I were in that situation where there were memories I'd happy to be without, I might think differently. But, like, I wouldn't want to change my own timeline anyway. Um, and... I wouldn't want to lose memories. I, w I wouldn't want to alter like what's happened, I guess. So that's probably where it's stemming from. I've enjoyed my life. I've had a lot of hurt. I've seen a lot of horrible things, but there's something about taking away those experiences of what who's made but me today. But you're not today necessarily taking makes... away those experiences because you already have those experiences because you experienced them before you went back. But the thing is, though, if you're snuffing that out, like, I'm, I'm telling you, there's, there is a way where it becomes interlinked. I'm like, how far are we talking about going back? That's the thing, though. That, yeah, that's the other we're, thing. we're seen in larger senses. Like, for me, for example, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm not suggesting going back to, like, you know, when we were five or six years old. Uh, I think that would cause a lot of long-term damage, especially if you already have the knowledge and you, you're six years old, you don't understand that knowledge. But I think something like, say, for me, I'm 37 years old. I would go back probably 2005, in the beginning of 2005. That's, I'm, I'm not going to lie, that's a lot because that's a, the growth time from 2005 to then. You really don't find who you are as a person until you're like around 25, 27. Most people don't find themselves. So you are taking away memories and you are taking away experiences. If you really think about that and you're replacing yourself, yes, you might have already been. But on that time and the way, there's certain things that were more important than the other. And where I said, once again, certain memories take precedence over other memories. And I mean, can you imagine just knowing every single video game that's already going to come out, like, and how it ends and all of that? Like, what do you do with your life? Play, play different games. I would read more books. I would beat somebody to an invention and make it better or make it, you know, in a way that would not be as... Uh, I don't know if I'd be thrilled to beat somebody on an invention, though, because then you're taking away someone's livelihood, if you think about it. I'd hire them. Oh. Like, the video game thing was a joke, but, right. but what I'm trying to get at is, I mean, if I went back to 2005, and I knew every, everything, if I knew everything that was going to happen between 2005 and 2018, but I'm in 2005, right? then the entire history that t that goes on, let's say I stay in that timeline for the next 13 years or whatever, that's going to be a completely different life than I had before. And even if you stayed there for like three days, right? I can see if, if, I, if in my original timeline I spent those three days playing a video game and doing nothing else, it wouldn't affect much, right? But it, it kind of depends what happens in those three days and what you do to change it too. Yeah, well, and and to be fair, there are a number, a lot of those years were just spent working and gaming, and I know that I could have been better productive, and I think maybe that I would, and is if I think about it, because I think it's a chance for change as well, because you 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 know you're you guys are it sounds like you guys are still thinking ultra linear, wherein because you have these experiences, if you already have the knowledge and you go back, it's something it's doesn't feel the same. 
what I'm suggesting is it's an opportunity to experience something else. Like, you know, if, if that one day you went into the door on the left, and now you go back and you remember the door on the left, now you have an opportunity to go through the door on the right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, yeah, but that's, that's the entire premise of that. It doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sit right with me either. Like, I made my choices, and I feel that that's how it is. Like, the, I'm going to tell you right now, the minuscule things, like I said, I would touch dicks, and i play more video games for my alter ego self. <laughs> that's it. I now, just, if, I we're saying, if we're saying I'm going to go back in time and relive the exact same 24-hour gaming session over and over and over again and play a different game every single time, I can see how that wouldn't impact my life in any way, right? Like, <laughs> that I have this knowledge from You're... 2018 isn't going to change that at all. So I'd be down for that. <laughs> so essentially, your primary concern or fear is changing anything involving going back. Yeah, if I'm going back in my own timeline, replacing the not person that was there slash the going back with the knowledge I have now and just popping into that part of my own timeline, I wouldn't want to do anything impactful, even if it was a minuscule thing. I think I get a coffee and observe myself and actually learn for myself going back to a regular timeline. To be honest, like know where I made my mistakes at and, and really actually really like super analyze myself from a distance with a good cup of coffee and being like, okay, that's where I fucked up. This is really what I need to focus on in the future. Fair enough. I mean, I didn't expect us all to agree on everything. So it's nice to get different viewpoints. <laughs> and I think part of it comes back to just perspective. Like, you know, and, and, and I got, I'm trying, I got to be careful how I approach saying this. I look at the things in my life, right? You know, the way I grew up, the way I was raised, joining the military, doing all of that, going to Iraq, you know, going to um, Bosnia, etc. And then I think about when I came home and the things that I saw and did and the stupid shit that I did that I didn't learn anything from. And I think one opportunity, make changes, control the changes that I make and yes it would have an effect on my timeline yes it would have had, it would have an effect on my experiences but it's also an opportunity to better appreciate the experiences I think about times where I saw something and it was great when I saw it but I remember very little detail it would be awesome to be able to go back and experience it again the initial shock out of the way I can appreciate more of it and I think that's where I'm coming from is I'm okay with interacting with it as long because I understand that I'm doing it for a better, you know what I mean? Yeah, but then that just comes down to kind of your own personal programming and if you're more conservative and cautious or if you're more of a risk taker. I'm kind of the more like, why try and fix something that isn't broken? Do I want to run the risk of introducing more problems? Do I want to change things and not know the outcome? Like when I'm happy with this outcome, you know? Yeah. When you have two of yourself, then you're not running that risk. It's like you have a save state. When you're replacing the other self, it's too risky. Yeah. Sometimes you got to be willing to take risks. Hmm. I don't know. I don't like the idea of losing even just one day of possible, like, possibilities or what I could have like learned and it possibly wasn't ingrained because sometimes it doesn't it takes a while for things to ingrain in people and become a memory and if something that I learned that day and it didn't like completely adhere into my memory I don't know I feel like I would lose out on a portion of what could have been and I don't really I don't like that Because I, I don't know if you guys are like this, but like every day I want to learn something new. I want to experience something new. I always 
jump to go out there, meet a new person, eat, like somebody I've never met before. It can be somebody even all the way down to in my working career and it's a shopper and I made that personal connection. And if I made their day better, I, it makes me better. And that's, and just something like that, where it's very minuscule, but it changed somebody else's day. What if that ended up being snuffed out and that memory was taken yeah, away? It's and not all being snuffed out because you have the option to do it again. That's the other thing. Right. But that's if you do it again. That's if you choose to. And it, it so that's why still it's personal choice. Say, even if, even with full control, you can recreate exactly what you hope to achieve with using your new self because you're not your old self. And that does come down to how far away it was. But if we're given the example of like even 10 years ago or five years ago, I wouldn't be, I'm not the same person personally. Like maybe you said you, not much has really changed with you or not fundamentally, but I feel like for me, just like Vasky, like every year I'm like fundamentally different. Like going back to my 14 year old stuff, like for instance, playing World of Warcraft, I was the most toxic, evil kid. I wanted everybody to fucking cry and be fucking, like, just fuck you if you couldn't be fucking good at the game and keep up with me. Like, I was a mean person. I didn't give a fuck what people thought. And now I, like, I I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to feel included. Like, I, I've completely changed and I've grown as a person. I used to be the most inconsiderate ass fuck in the entire fucking... I swear, I was a horrible fucking person, and now it's just coming into my own and really experiencing life and really seeing what your personality can do unto others, and it's just like, yeah, no, I don't want to go back to that time. Maybe maybe to somehow fix things, but the thing is, that shaped me to become who I am now, to realize that I was a fucking dick fuck. Yeah, no, that I agree. Same with me. It's like you're the building blocks to where you ended up now in your current timeline aren't something that even you yourself can understand enough to recreate, even if you chose to. Like you wouldn't. I don't think you would have any one person would have enough like that much control over the events in order to to preserve anything. Like it wouldn't be guaranteed. It wouldn't even be likely, depending how far back you went. Especially if I'm taking myself from the current present where I have learned all this empathy and all this and then bringing it back in and then redoing it and either A, being empathy the whole time and not really experiencing how I was a dick and really forming my personality. There's this growth that, that could possibly be missing in between that from understanding what I have done wrong in my life. Um, the people and et cetera and so forth. It's just, I don't know. And I'd rather think I'd rather still be that dick back in 14 years old because I would have never learned through the time, through gaming, going, ah, shit, I really need to be considerate. I need to do what I expect to be done on to me. Like, I want people to be nice to me. I might as well do the same thing for others and respect people for their ideals. So, I mean... And I wouldn't have learned that without the repercussions of how I've acted and all that throughout the years. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would like that. It's the whole premise of that they've reused a million times, the trope that, you know, you squish a fly in the past and then it fundamentally changes every single thing, even though you thought this fly was completely inconsequential, right? And that's, again, it's a microcosm for that. It's like multiplied 1,000 times. Like every single action that you do has the chance to change something in the future that you didn't expect. So even if you go back and you decide you want to change things for the better, you want to use your time more efficiently, you want to be more effective, you want to be a better person or whatever, I don't think that you're really going to be able to come out at the end of it and be like, yeah, all of that was worth it. I would feel like that was a waste of time. If I had just gone and just redone everything again, I don't, I don't think I'd be satisfied with it at the end anyway.
It might surprise you I to agree. know that I've met only two people that actually agree with my idea. Which makes it interesting. And what's, what exactly is your idea? What I just talked about, the idea of being able to go back and oh. cho choose to experience new or the same things. Or try to get more memories. Like, you can still do the things that you did, but have the understanding or the knowledge that you wasted time doing other things. And can instead spend that time getting more memories. Like, I think... I guess that's something that's kind of important to me, just because I've learned to appreciate good memories, and I have a lot more bad memories than good, just because of how the choices I made early on. And they weren't necessarily bad choices. Joining the army wasn't a bad choice, but it led to a number of bad things. It happens. Right. Go Patty, go, um, go Patty, go, go, go. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to experience new things and be more productive from that standpoint. But the thing is, I don't think I would change exactly what I did. I think I would then find a way to slot in more time to be able to experience other things and whatnot. I'd, I'd want to not sleep. I become an insomniac is what would happen because I want to do exactly what I already did in my life because I already know the repercussions that I did and I accept what I've done and I would just want to experience even more of them and meet more people and network more and work more <laughs> and all these other things that coincide with that. Yeah. That's another thing. Like you just drive yourself insane if you try and min max your life and it's like, where do you stop? Maybe we never do. I mean, again, it just... It goes back to there's there will always be consequences. And the question is... The question would be, what consequence are you willing to accept? Because it's... I could accept that it would have an impact on who I am today, and I can accept that what I have now would likely not exist, both bad and good. And I would have to accept that if I made that choice, and that's the hard part. Because anybody could say, oh yeah, I'd go back and do all that. Like, I acknowledge, and, I, and that's why I try to be honest about this, I acknowledge if I go back and I change anything about my past. Like, even if I start, even if I go back to just eight years ago, right, to 2010, I change anything, I may end up having not being back with, with my girl, wouldn't have Emily, who knows what I would be doing. And I guess because I can, I, I keep it in the theoretical realm, I'm okay with processing that. Because maybe I don't think the same way if I'm actually presented. But like if somebody walked to my door right now and said, hey, you can do all of this right now, I'm not entirely sure that I would go through with it. But I might. And that's the oh, I think I'd want to make sure. I, I don't have kids yet. I'm almost 30, and I, I'm very content with that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my daughter to death. And I oh, I bet, like, I have no doubt on that. It's just, like, I I know what I am right now with my career, and I just, like, mm, I, I can go and, and support a kid now, but it's just, like, mm, there's there's more that I want to experience before I lock down and, and create a family of my own, and that's the thing, though, is, like, yes, I have those memories. I have this weird feeling I would probably if I went and relived it, I probably would have already had a kid with the person that I wouldn't have stood because I probably would have tried to fix things with him. And I probably would have had a kid with him and I would have fucking hated myself. Because I'm stubborn. And I tried with the guy for six years and almost did have a family with him. And we were talking about it and that would have been the worst mistake ever. And I know I would have done it all over again. And there was a possibility that a kid would have came out of it and I would have fucking lost my goddamn mind. Yeah, kids tend to have that kind of impact. When uh, when I found out Tabby was pregnant, 
it uh it kind of threw me for a loop but and this is the weird thing and i i, I don't know if all expectant fathers get this way uh, tabby has told me that my response was unusual but instead of like getting excited or getting angry my mind just kind of switched gears like all right well this is gonna happen let's prepare like i didn't start getting excited until about eight months in, right around the time that the baby was gonna, you know, the, the, the time was approaching for the baby to be born. Before that, it was all strictly practical, logical, task oriented approach and behavior. Right. And this is where me, it's on the fact of like, I'd probably go so overboard, either A, preventing even being with this guy, or B, trying so hard to stay with him and make something happy, which I know will end up driving me insane because we're totally not meant to be. And I would try so damn fucking hard to make it work. And there possibly would have been a kid out of it. And I would have been a fucking miserable piece of shit. Now, on the flip side, imagine if you went back and then prevented yourself from being with him in the first place. Yeah, a but lot of time there's... Been saved. At the same time... What about the implications of how your new your new self impacts the people around you? Because they're not used to your new self. They're not used to 2018 you. They're used to like 2012 you or 28, 2008 you or whatever it is. And you might go back and be treating them based on actions you know that they've done. But that person in that timeline hasn't done those actions yet. And that's like, it's like you're your delusional actions. almost. Yeah. So that's another problem and that and that's what I'm saying is like I'm gonna have preconceived notions with this guy going back through my life again and being able to change it or completely not have it happen whatsoever, which like I said, I am content with my experiences because yeah, being with the guy for six years ended up being a fucking waste of my goddamn time in, in retrospect when I think of it in a bitter way. But when I come to think of it, I learned a lot. I grew a lot. I learned to accept myself a lot and move on in quite a big deal in a way. So it's just like, yeah, no, I will go through it all over again just because of the fact that I have grown so much from it. I think if I had that knowledge when I went back, I would be, I would rather not go back to that situation because I have that knowledge and save the pain of the experience that I still have. Like uh, a good example, a good example. If I went to a bar and I had a bottle smashed against my face, right? And then I go back and I say, I'm not going to go to the bar. I had the experience of knowing that I was slashing the face and I didn't like it. So I can go back and stop myself and go into the bar. That way I don't have to. And just like, so by the same logic, if with that knowledge that you have, you have that knowledge going back. So you can save yourself from having to endure it because you've already endured it. You're not going to, I don't think, I don't think you're going to lose the memories when you go back. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying there's certain experiences that came to fruition. And if I decided not to do a certain thing that day, that possibly made me because there's small implications over a course of six years and things get lost and forgotten. I feel like, yes, part of the, that experience that I've had with them and learned and lost and blah, 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 I feel like would be it's still lost in a sense. Like, at, like I'm one of those people, I, I'm, I'm an art, I'm an art person. So I look at the very fine details of things. Like life is this giant roller coaster of minuscule details that are beautiful and disgusting and ugly all at the same time that makes something beautiful in the same like in the same sense and I think granted yes I would possibly know that but I would know that like it's still altering things in a small very minuscule sense that I find would not be beneficial yeah you you don't know the ripple effect like let's say you go back to 2005 you stop yourself from getting slashed in the face or whatever but at this time, you think that's a positive change and you think that only good can come from that. But what if you're forgetting something that happened to you in 2010 that you didn't know was you, you only acted that way because of that experience? Like what if at some point you were faced with a decision and you were like, well, 
and it, because I, I was slashed in the face that one day, that influenced you to be more um, thinking like, oh, anything can happen. And like, it, it changes you like even minimally, you know? But I gotta go now, so have fun. Okay. Have a good one, man. Um, I'm actually going to do a bit of an intermission. I need to go have a cig really Sounds bad. Good. I can't smoke in the house. So we'll put it at like five minutes. All right, awesome. So apparently the, uh, apparently the centaur, uh, Magni is going to get caught to the centaur. I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. He's technically could, talked to him before back in Vanilla. Yeah, it could be interesting, though, because Theradrus is dead, lore-wise. Yeah. And he's made out of diamonds, so now that their goddess is gone, like, yeah, I think they'll easily, like, listen to him. More than they likely. Li they like their, their people made out of stone. I mean, they are a direct result of Faradas, so. Yeah, that could could be interesting. I mean, it, I've always kind of wanted them to add like centaur and dryads as a uh, playable races, but I doubt they will. Yeah, I doubt. Because they never much as do I think that would mounts. be cool. But like they really haven't even updated their uh, their their models, like yeah, which is like kind of sad um, in a way. Yeah. But because they actually really are cool when you think of it with the cons and then the turmoil and Theridas, um for the princess and technically their true mother um, and their their like grandmother is like the mother Earth of Azeroth, basically. For the mm -hmm. elemental plane, which is really fucking cool. There's a really cool backstory that can be really you drawn out more and, and, and talked friends. about and really fleshed out. And I honestly think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I think they could easily, like, the centaur could easily go with the horde. And because they, cause they appreciate strength guys, overall. Guys, guys, during this intermission, uh, but, hmm? I'm a, Emily wants to say hi, so let's watch our language for a little bit. Oh, okay. All right, hold on. Put the headset on her for a minute. <laughs> Listen. All right. All right, baby. When I say it's okay to talk, go ahead and say hi, okay? All right, and go. Hello. Hello. Uh, all right, talk. I speak language. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> yeah. I speak language all the time. You tell them you can sing... <laughs> Anime songs? Uh, the, 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 I can sing up the, the, the Tober songs. And, um, my my favorite, favorite song is the, the, uh, the piano and the violin. It's called Your Lie in April. Oh, okay, nice. The U I and, and April. That is my favorite movie. There's favorite movie, My Neighbor Totoro. Totoro. The Totoro? Yeah, my neighbor Totoro. Wow, I, I I never named that girl. It's a really good movie. The, the, Ask the, your dad about it. I, I got a the neighbor who speaks English. Ooh, the, the, that's how my <laughs> the neighbors speak English. Do you oh, speak? really? My baby neighbor just can't talk right now because she she is very so cute. <laughs> Are they a little itty bitty baby? <laughs> yeah. Aww. And but yeah, ask your dad um about the movie My Neighbor Totoro. I'm sure he'll he'll have you watch that film.
It's a really good uh, animated film. She she's whispering in my ear. Did you see that film? Emily, you look really cute with that headset on. I think I need to make you a professional gamer. <laughs> my dad is so silly. Wait, what was that? <laughs> what did you say? Talk into the microphone. My dad is so silly. Yeah, he is. Mm-hmm. But that's a good thing. Yeah. The question is, does daddy take care of you? Does my dad take the care of me? More than likely, it sounds like he does. You got a great vocabulary. Yeah. Even we get some time together but with my but with my puppy name Bailey Noland. Bailey? Yeah. He's my nice. favorite puppy. My she... uh I have a puppy too, his name's Oolong. Duan? What kind of name is that? I don't know. But why do your dog speak English? Like, <laughs> oh, he doesn't. He speaks um hyperactive little guy, and he likes to bite ankles. He's an ankle biter. Wow. My yeah. puppy wants to to kiss me all day when I get to drop off from sack. Aww. For the record, SAC is the after school care. It's an acronym for school age child care. Oh, nice. Yeah. And guess what? I have a new movie named The Vampirina Holly. Ooh. That's a good name. Mm hmm. You tell, did you tell them about Vampirina? She. Did, did she have some blue skin? It's so some fat braids, and then did she have the the case of the baddies? Really? Huh? There's Boris and Lisa. They're that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, the, the those are Vampirina's parents. Boss and Asita. All right, baby. I'm going to take the microphone back, okay? Can we please still talk? Oh, you want to talk some more? Vasky, is it okay if she talks some more? Yeah, no problem. Can you hear her? Yes, I can hear her, baby. Through the microphone? Yep. My dad can hear you from the microwave. <laughs> I mean oh, nice. Microwave. I love microwaves. They make the best pizza rolls. Uh-oh, we're being attacked. We're being attacked. Uh-oh. Since, since we're recording video, I'm having her help me kill bad, bad people. I got it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. You say, get him, get him. Get, get him! Come on, come on. Okay. All right, baby, I'm going to take the microphone back. We're going to have some conversation. You have your tablet. Okay. <laughs> this video brought to you by Childhood. <laughs> I love you, baby. She has a great uh, set of vocabulary. How much? How old is she? Uh, she's six years old, and she's autistic. Holy cow! No way, really? Yep. Well, she's on the spectrum. All right. Well, my brother has Asperger's, and he's twenty-seven. He just turned twenty-seven, mm -hmm. so he's been killed. I would have never guessed nope. with her. Okay, baby, go back to your tablet. Okay. We'll talk some more later. Whoa! Whoa careful. Yeah, she's Which is pretty adorable. darn cool, because they're brilliant. No jumping. 
Yeah, she's a pretty cool kid. She into video games? She, uh, sometimes. She's, uh... She plays cell phone games right now, and every now and then I let her oh. sit on my lap and play, uh, play WoW a little bit. I have a recommendation for a really, really, really cute game for her. Um, on the and it's free to play. It's called Happy Street. Never even heard of it. You get to build your own little towns. Each one have their like little themes. They have like one for like uh, Chinese New Year and like Valentine's Day and like all these really cute shops. And you basically build your own city with an economy. And it's really easy to play and it's super cute. And voice sounds are like, and it, they're re it's, the design's really cute. And I think she, because I'm obsessed with it. But it's a really good game for kids. Like, it's basically for all ages. Well, that's always nice. We've been teaching her to play driving games, too. <clears throat> we have a, Oh, nice. We have Burnout, and we have a, a Need for Speed Blacklist. Our most recent Oh, okay, story. cool. So, yeah, she, kind of, she and she likes watching us. Like, me and, my, me and Tabby, uh, Burnout is kind of our couples game because we like to do the crashes and we try to earn the bigger vehicles and do more crashes so it's that's oh, the nice. extent of her gaming she used to play wow well a little bit like i have an account for her and i really wish i had been streaming her because she is so hilarious this woman who basically Aww. never played an rpg i made her a mage a pindaran mage and at one point like i'm trying to game and i'm trying to raid doing super serious and i'm checking out on her and while I'm talking in Discord, apparently in the background you could hear, Go, 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 die, 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 die. And it's my girl in the background <laughs> as a level 10 mage killing a turtle. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. My 13-year-old 13, uh, 13 plays WoW well a little bit too, but she doesn't engage in the game in the same way that you know, regular players do. So, But I mean, it's fun and it's cute and it's something that, that they can do from time to time. Exactly. But yeah, she's uh, graduating kindergarten this year. And Sweet. We we have some struggles. I mean, it's it can be hard to explain. I guess, and I guess we've already had our five minute break or ten minute break. The thing is, I totally get it because I grew up with my brother. My brother's my younger brother, and I've completely helped structure him and everything. And I took classes on Asperger's and autism. So. No, I totally am. It's, it's setting structures and boundaries and really opening their mind to all kinds of options and just getting them out there. And structure is so important. It's very important. And like I think that's a, been the a consistent, part. like, time, like a timeline, basically, of like, the, they, they like time schedules is what I found out with my brother. My brother is like, has to have a schedule. Like right now, the hardest part is going to be her transitioning from school to not having school. Which she loves the bus. She loves to get up and get dressed. She's she's like Miss Independent until she can't do something, and then she gets frustrated and she gets upset when we help her. But then she wants to help. I feel bad for her because it's so confusing and at times overwhelming. Right. Like seeing the world through her eyes, like the way she interacts with everything, is not only a learning experience, but it's interesting. Right. I remember my brother, I'm seeing Bubbles for the first time, and it confused him, made him cry, and then he was incredibly happy. Like he's experienced like all the possible emotions you can have with bubbles and the grief that came with it too when they finally disappeared it was i don't know they, they experience everything's heightened in emotions and everything and how they see the world and experience it i think it's um honestly i think it's a lot more beautiful mm -hmm. so while we're in the mid middle of a video and having covered a lot of time travel stuff maybe we pivot to another interesting topic Sure, why not? Is there a particular topic that you would find interesting to talk about? I'm 
an open book. Like, I'll, I can talk about anything. Here's your chance. Pick something random. I love random conversations, especially when I'm surprised by the topic. Could be video game related, life related, politics, religion, the the idea, the theory of everything. Go nuts. Put me on the spot. All I right. Know. Um. Are you versed in talking about like DNA and genetic splicing and all of that and evolution? I am versed in evolution. Okay, do we want to talk about that? And um, okay, how about this? Do you like How to Train Your Dragon? I am a fan of that movie. Yes. Do you want to talk about the recent trailer about how the representation of a white female is in it? I have not and seen how the actual I think... trailer. I saw the poster. Go watch the trailer and give me your feedback on it because a lot of people are raging that the representation of a female is totally whitewashed and all this thing. And I'm like, she lives in an underground cave. We can have a, we can have a discussion about that because I, I think that's a fun one. Oh, God. Are we going to get like. Wow. What? I said, are people just like freaking out of our stupid shit again? Yeah, they're saying her nose is too pink, which actually is inaccurate. If we want to talk about all the different creatures that are in a cave, most of them are white and they have a lack of melanin, which we are most in a whitish, pinkish tone. And if we really wanted to get accurate with her, she would have eyes that were basically clear, smoky white. But, I mean, that's here nor there. But. We, we've got a lot of feminists that are angry because they made her too feminine. And why isn't oh, she just on, black like another, um, right, whatever night okay. thing it's called? Uh, yeah, it's it's goofy. Wait, are they, are they mad about the freaking dragon? Sorry, she really wanted to sing for you guys for a second. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. All right, so let me I pull like up this trailer. The songbird. So are they mad about the dang dragon? Yep. That's so stupid. It's a dragon. I, I, people have been raging about it. How dare Hold you whitewash a dragon? Because dragons are like white right. people now. So, all right, Apparently. let's be quiet for a second. I'm going to watch the trailer now. It's a hidden dragon world. Wow. Viking Utopia. Your Utopia. I will say visually this Mind thing is less incredible. Mine's less and more. Ah! Oh, yeah. Sanitary. Hey, Mike. Wait up. It reminds me of the change from Cars 2 to Cars 3. <laughs> oh, my God. He's not the only one. She's a light fury. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did she just disappear? Wow. It's a hidden dragon world. Toothless, go introduce yourself. I love how they still make Toothless so clumsy. Oh, it's the best. Toothless has a girlfriend. I've hunted every night, Fury, except yours. Hand him over. I will never give him up. Then I will destroy everything you love. We are no longer safe here. We all have to disappear completely off the map. We have to fight for their freedom. Come on, Mike. You're nothing without your dragon. Attack! 
Show them what you got, bud. Oh, they're calling it a conclusion. It's you and me, bud. Always. And another new ability? Okay, wow. First off, wow. Hypes, yeah. Oh, man. So, I mean, I guess we could segue this into a, a general, like, it, it can be the source, but a general conversation about the issues of attributing motive based on, uh, for lack of a more sensitive term, skin color. I mean, obviously it's playing out in dragons in one way, whereas in life it plays out in a different way. But, right. like, my first thought, when I, as I see the appearance of the Light Fury, you know, in much the same way, I look at, if, if someone is introduced to a white European versus a black African national, and, you know, just first glances, you first see them, they're different ways, they're different cultures, they're different strengths and whatnot, and I think that's an opportunity in how to train your dragon to see that you know just because they're a fury doesn't mean they're the same their origin is different their home is different their life is different and i don't and i think if they're if people are complaining because of the whitewashing i think it's i don't think it's inappropriate to have a dragon that looks other than a night fury because we have a night fury i, I don't see what the hubbub is all about i i think it's I'm glad they waited till the third movie, and I'm glad they have it. I'm concerned because a lot of, whether it's Disney or DreamWorks or regular Hollywood, has a kind of progressive liberal bias in their messaging, whether it's intentional or not. But you know, in terms of that story, I don't see, I don't see any issue with what they're doing. So, my Facebook feed has been littered with, because I am a feminist. But I am the feminist that sees the equal opportunity for everyone because there is men that are unrepresented regarding their emotions and many other things. There's men that aren't even paid as much. There's some women that make more than men. I mean, there's this whole entire feminist 45 of the top 100 that, cities in the United States, women are out earning men by 8% or more. Yep, exactly. If we're going to get about realistic, realistic uh, statistics, yeah, there is. There's some more advanced areas than others. Yes, women still aren't represented in some cases, but there's a lot of men that aren't represented in cases. Yep. Like, right, men aren't allowed to talk about that or talk about their feelings and how they get assaulted and all these other things. But as my case going to this trailer, is these women on my feed and Facebook, Twitter, having a absolute rager that she is cute rounded off more than he is he's got a little bit more edgier tones to him she has a little pink nose and she has blue eyes like she is just as feminine as it can get wait are you suggesting um, that a species that is feminine that is female has feminine features exactly now here's mm -hmm. my points in kate in case two that i've put on and i've had over 300 people with me so far completely agree with me and actually not like argue with me whatsoever. Majority of people have not argued me, whatever, which I'm not. I'm basing out evolutionary facts of what we would see even in real life in our own reptilian forms, especially when they're going into a cave system that has bioluminescence in it. Most of the time, these form of bioluminescence, if I'm going to tell you right now, if his um, toothless was in that situation, that toothless would have be toothless um, in the movie would have been white just like the female, um, because it's the lack of melanin and being exposure to the sun. Well, do you the pink do we nose is direct result in the evolutionary the song. Hmm? Do are, is it is it making an assumption to suggest that uh, reptiles or other animals have a melanin effect in the same way that humans do? Yeah. And it, and it is, it's a direct right with being 
not being exposed to the sun for reptiles. It's you have it with crawdads, you have it with everything. If it is not exposed to the sun and the lack of melanin, it creates that evolutionary form of how they evolutionize and actually become a different species because therefore a lack of sun in cave systems. It's a whole entire new ecosystem. It's everything. And these people are attributing them to making this. And I get it. Yes, it is a female. She is cute. She has a pink nose down to it to so certain species. Like there's one called the Ulm, which is a type of salamander. I believe it's in Northern Europe. It's one of the largest salamanders in the world in a cave system. It is pink. It looks like an axolotl, but 10 times bigger, a little more slender. It has clear white eyes. It is slightly pink and it is completely white. And they're blind half the time in there. Granted, she's not blind in this movie, but when you come down to the brass tacks of it in evolutionary form, this movie and her make complete and utter sense of what it is. And I've had a couple of people going, no, they're completely whitewashing her and making her into this feminist little thing that like, why couldn't she be a black knight fury too? Well, based on her environment, no, an evolutionary stance, absolutely not. They did their homework. And that's I my biggest, just, I'm actually infuriated with feminists with right now is, that don't do their homework about evolutionary traits Well, not only, and what makes sense in a movie. Not only that, but it speaks to a much broader and vague idea of the problem of having a, what we'll transform the wording, a basically a Caucasian dragon. Because right. in a lot of social discussions, they include the inter, you know, we call for humans we call it interracial, where one person is of a different ethnicity than their partner. And you know, because uh, I w just from the poster, somebody was talking to me about it, and they are somebody who has a problem in a general sense with a of an interracial couple. And he's like, this is. And he literally said to me, "This is classic: the black male and the white female. The white female's in distress, and the black male comes in and saves the day, and then they make babies." And I'm like, that's, well, that's like, the that was, funny like, the thing is that it's actually Toothless heard. is the one that's in distress in this film. It's her that saves him, technically. Right. But I mean, I but the that. movie presents She's it as the he, he attempts to, because males tend to do that. It's kind of been our DNA. Yeah, and that's an evolutionary experience. trait as well, too, unfortunately, in the animal kingdom. If we're going to attribute this to the animal kingdom, because they are a form of reptile, if you really think about it, and how they have interlinked bioluminescence and all these other environments that are likewise of earth and nature, then no, this is completely acceptable in nature's terms, in evolutionary terms. And now I get it. Yes, okay. It is a... There's other dragons in the film that don't look like females at all. They look like all the other dragons within their their own coven and breed. I get it, but they also aren't the, the thing is, the this is a main story character being interlinked with Toothless. It's a plot point. I get it. Yes, she's been made a little more rounded, a little more sweet, a little bit softer, edgier, with less edges than the other dragons. The well, female and stature. a way to convert but, it for people who are like gamers, for example, right? Let's turn this into, let's kind of put it in an MMO perspective. Arthas is a human, but right. he is taller and larger than all of the regular players. Tyrion Fordring is the same way. The main story, plot specific characters get bigger representation physically because they are meant to stand out as the heroes or the villains. Like they, exactly. they need to be, they need to be able to, to be identified. And, I think that for this story, the idea of having a fury that doesn't look like Toothless but is a main element allows us to establish and maintain the distinction between the two. And yeah. and having because her be they are literally the highest, they're above the all other dragons though too. Is that a lot of people don't realize is night fairies are above the rest of the right. dragons. They are the most advanced. So I mean. In that, in that case, makes sense, too. I've had uh, some people completely disagree with me and that I am not a feminist because of this. And I was just like, what? Excuse me? Oh, I hear what? I've heard that plenty. Because I, I, I'm looking at it on a scientific point, and I'm actually seeing, yes, I see your statement, but I'm actually giving you evidential facts of, like, how this movie is being set up and making sense. 
and a scientific standard too? I mean, please. Like, I'm all about feminism, but I hate the feminist agenda where they have to pick apart I, every little thing. I am a fan thing. of the theory of waves. Like, you had first wave feminism that brought about suffrage, which was great. Like, I, you will never hear me disagree with that. Then you had second wave feminism, which was about the integration of equal measures like, you know, better pay and equal opportunities, the not being a pariah for working and things like that. Right. My issue is with the third wave feminism, which in a lot of cases is essentially anti-male. They are the ones that talk about that the men are the intimidators and that we need to essentially effeminate them. That way they can fit in better to society. And I think it takes a lot away from the male culture and a strong, positive male culture when they spend their entire life being ridiculed for not being a woman. Now... I agree and disagree with that. I do think men need to hone in onto their more feminine side and actually let their guard down because so many men have become, for instance, suicide and sexual assault and they aren't able to talk about it and voice it. I feel like more men do need a voice when it comes to those things and being able to be a part of the whole entire humanity of what's going on in these atrocities that are happening because there is too many men that are going silent about this and right now there's a lot of women that are doing let's say the me too movement but there's men that need to be involved in this too because women aren't the only proprietors and and sufferers from this but i don't think it requires them being effeminate i think it just no not at all but the thing is i I, it's it's not the fact of being feminine but being able to open themselves up and and actually being able to talk and voice and and we need to build up the maturity of that and us that way they can in both in both genders being able to understand each other and the woes that we've went through and and understanding and making both of us better feels so weird in this house for example like i am a i am a red-blooded blue-collar conservative right and in this household we have my girl who's relatively libertarian and we have her mother who is ultra liberal feminist she is essentially one of the man-hating feminists i'm like it's not much of an exaggeration and it's very hard to have conversations of, a, of any kind of controversial nature because it immediately comes back to, well, women had to endure this, well, women had to endure this, taking absolutely no account as to how things are presently. They, are, they, they go back to the past to justify the present, even though we've already righted the wrongs. Like, we, well, we've already been working on righting the wrongs. And there, there are bad apples, but, she, but people like her still attribute the individual problem to the society as a whole. If you get what I mean, like I'm, I I am okay with when, like, uh, there's a quote from Ronald Reagan, and it summarizes how I feel very well. Uh, let me pull it up. I definitely agree, a hundred percent. Okay, here, it's took me a second to find it. And his quote reads, We must reject the idea that every time a law is broken, society is guilty rather than the lawbreaker. It is time to restore the American precept that each individual is accountable for his actions. Right, totally agree on that one. No doubt on that one. Like, I love that idea. Because what it establishes is that, yes, there are individuals who act a certain way that is not okay. That doesn't mean that society is wrong because that individual acted the way they did. And people are, I think people, a lot of people are starting to lose that idea and forget that idea. And I, I, I feel like it needs to be brought back. And that, Definitely. And, 
these are the kind of conversations I can have all day too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just I'm I am I'm kind of I really am I'm I'm getting sick and tired of the feminists. They're just saying that, and there's these men that actually do give a shit, you know. I think, I think what's worse sometimes is the men who buy into like that hardline like extremist feminist message. Yeah. You know it sucks. Like I consider myself a feminist myself, or whatever you want to call it, an ally. People get really fucking pedantic about that shit. The thing is, a man can be a feminist, and I'm getting really sick of women saying that they can't be, you know? You know, you have to call yourself an ally. Oh, yeah, okay. Think, uh, well, some of them expect you to, to depreciate yourself in the name of feminism. Like, I'm Which okay I with think supporting is a feminism, of bullshit. but I'm going to support myself first. And I'm going to do that by acknowledging and knowing who I am and knowing what, what knowing how what I do affects the people around me. Like, I have daughters. I yeah. teach them to protect themselves, but to be open to interactions. If I had a son, I would teach him to respect women. And I'm not going to do anything different. And I'm not going to let my six-year-old act and think that they're a boy because she says she's a boy. Now, this isn't an attack on Rin. She, uh, me and her have had this conversation, so she understands my stance. But right. you know, if it's something is when you get older and that's how you feel, you know, when you're 18 and you're on your own and those are decisions that you can process and make on your own, that's fine. But not at no six or seven years old or even 14. Like adolescence is a is already a terribly erratic time in a person's life. And I think that estab that at least establishing the environment with by which certain things exist and certain things are with a scientific basis is much better. Because then they have that premise. So when they have that, if they have that identity crisis in the future, they understand more about what it is. Because if you just start letting them do it at a young age, then you are, I think you are doing actual damage to that child. I 100% agree. And again, I 100% agree. No but I feel to... like a, a child, if, if, if they come to that decision on their own, well, I get at it six as years well, old, too. My child walks up to me and says, Daddy, I'm a dog. Rough, rough. Does that mean I need to support the decision to walk on all fours and pee on the carpet? No. Because she's six years old. She's everything at some point. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I 100% yeah. agree with that. Uh, now, my for me, for my gender, the issue I have is when the men insist that because they have done so much for society in terms of its growth that women owe mankind for it and i have met some of them i don't associate with them i've met them in passing i don't have friends like that i can't tolerate them but you know while we can acknowledge who did certain things and i don't think it should be used to take away from women who contribute and how it benefits women it's like it's a really weird. You kind of got to be on both sides. Oh, we're yeah. gonna do a raid boss while doing a YouTube video. <laughs> okay, awesome. Y'all get to see how bad I am at my class. Wait. Oh yeah, I'm playing some Overwatch while we talk. There you go. Oh yay, and somebody remembered to pop blood lust. But I mean But yeah, I just I find it I find it very important that both sides need to get the views. I'm really getting sick of women saying that men like have talked long enough and it's like, yeah, but you know what, everyone is entitled to their opinion though too. That's not that's not constructive. Like that's music. not advancing. It that's not becoming one. Yeah, that's here's a question. When do men get the right to talk again? Like, do you have, like, a date? Is there a date out there that you have an idea? Okay, you can talk again now. Well, but, like, my whole thing is measured response. Like, I respond how I'm talked to. And when I get into arguments with somebody that I know is not going to go anywhere, and then they start pulling that garbage, 
I have a series of phrases, I have a series of things that I tell them that will either shut them down or shut them up. Which is, you know, when a, when one of these wacko third wave feministers start complaining, I'm what I say, um, who gave you guys the right who voted to give you guys the right to vote because it was the right thing to do? Who ended slavery because it was the white the right thing to do? Who sent people to other countries to stop those things because they were bad to have? You know, who created the technologies that are allowing you to be successful and grow and have longer lifespans? And like it was men. Does that mean that you owe us? No, but it does mean that we are very we were the contributors to an industrial society, and for that we should be allowed to stay on the same pedestal as you guys. Exactly. I mean, the thing is, the whole entire advancement to make the world great is that we both need to rise each other up. We yeah. both need to accredit each other. We both need to help rise and advance because that's the only way our human race is going to conquer and and well, and that's and how we grow, got here. You know, like, you know, we and and I guess for this, I, I have to speak as my gender because that's kind of the perspective that's got to come from. But we recognized that there was a, that there were wrongs that needed to be righted, and it didn't happen overnight. But you know, society, we as a society came to the conclusion that yes, this was a wrong. This was something that should have been fixed and needs to be fixed. And then we fixed it. And then what we got in return was, well, you didn't do enough. And then when we did more, right. you didn't do enough. You know? And and at some point, the people who have tried to work with you to get there don't want to work with you anymore because there's no grad there's no internal gratitude at a societal level. There's simply a desire for more. And that part gets to right. me. Yeah, I knew a chick actually who, uh, like, she, for whatever reason, she had, like, a real big heart on over this. Like, as soon as she heard that, like, we're getting close to being able to, like, like, right now, technically, like, we're close to the point where I could get, like, a cell from, like, Uvasky, like a skin cell, and a skin cell from some other chick and make a fucking artificial sperm and an artificial egg and like make a new person using just the cells for like two women. Yep. So she and was like, I think that we, is, should, we should get rid of men now. Level. No, I don't think you should get rid of men. I think men play a vile part in the growth of our society. And I find that delusional in our evolutionary yeah. make. That's delusional. Now, what yeah. I find amazing is that men I don't know. I love this Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I thought it was so weird when I was a kid. But do you guys oh, remember yeah. when he was pregnant and, or whatever yeah. they had they had made him pregnant? I thought that was so cool. I'm like, mom, wouldn't that be fucking cool when down the road that men are able to carry babies if women are not fit to do so? Like, because if we're not healthy enough to do it or it will kill us. Like, what if the man's able to do it? They are able to do that now. They literally can. You can make a a a man can carry a fetus. It's literally getting to that stage now. I believe actually one of them has been successful. Yeah. I think yeah, I think there is actually a case where a guy did it. Walt Disney and I think has that's in incredible. That to to say that we pregnant. won't need men anymore is disgusting. Yeah, yeah. She was all about like getting rid of males altogether. That's disgusting because that's I'm gonna tell you right now. Just because you, we can take two other cells, I still find that to be the extinction of us and the de-evolutionizing of us any further advancement of our community and humanity and morality. Yep, I do think- If you want to uh, get real. Yeah, I do think an interesting thing is kind of off the topic of that, but we're actually we're having a like conversation on a series of topics, really guys. close I'm sorry, the video to the best, but like this is awesome. just full on artificial wounds where oh, yeah. no one will ever have to be pregnant. Yeah. So you can That's literally just that, get your like you get your dude, he he shoots off in a jar, you get your egg harvested, and then bam. They put that in a freaking bag, and you can, you can literally go to the lab or to the hospital or whatever and look at your kid and like through a, a transparent bag 
and see how it's going. Like you can see, you can spot like defects and stuff before you even like it gets to the point where it's like an issue. Also, guess what? Welcome to the other conversation. We're doing a fun little conversation for Aluna and his channel. Like, I myself, I'm a trans humanist, so that kind of stuff is really cool. Because, like, a lot of people put a lot of, a lot of weight on, like, the idea of being human, and I'm like, what about being better? Right. Like, why do we have to, like, be human? Like, why can't we become something better than human? Well, why can't we become right. more and more? I don't know if it's about being better. It's just, Preacher. I think it's just about how do we improve mankind? We don't need to improve humans. We need to improve mankind. Yeah, I consider, yeah. like, mankind as a, an idea. And, like, some people, for whatever reason, match that with, like, our biological nature. Like, they don't, they don't want to, like, change that. Like, there's a lot of stuff about humans that suck. Sorry. Yeah, it's true. but um, once you once you start getting into, like, uh, genetic testing, or, like, genetic, genetic engineering and changing how things work and all that, and maybe, like, uh, finding out, like, if somebody's got this gene that could be hereditary that turns out to be a bad disease, that's going to start causing mutations where it's going to be even worse. Um... I think that's a bit extremist because people are like look at diseases. There's some strains of the flu that have to be treated in a whole new way because they mutated so much. Yes. And there's other cases, other diseases that are the same way that they've mutated because of being treated and they're getting to the point where it's almost impossible to treat them properly. You're talking about the super virus theory, whereby because of our interaction with them, it's forcing them to become stronger as they Correct. Survive. Yes, but the thing really quick, is... Y'all keep talking, I have to do an emergency bio. Alrighty. Oh, yeah. But yeah, no, the thing is, you're acting like... Because, like, in my situation, artificial wounds are a thing. They can do genetic testing on embryos and stuff to like get around everything, any possible genetic issue possible, like any kind of mutation, they can plan for that. That's the thing. But that's gonna, it's, that's it's, gonna, it's gonna result gonna in, dark. that's gonna result in more mutations. How? Because the How? only mutations you're gonna be having are the ones that they plan on. Life finds a way. Basically, the chaos theory. I mean, it's it's gonna happen. I think that's like a slippery slope argument. That. I think us as humans need to change fundamentally from a genetic level in order to I think get to the point where we can ascend across like ascend beyond the stars because as we are now I don't think we're we can like we're ready for that. There are innumerable things we can fix. We can get rid of the whole idea of cancer, we can get rid of genetic diseases, we can make ourselves stronger, smarter. There are actually already procedures to get rid of cancer. I realize, but I'm talking about like gene therapy, stuff like that. Okay. I have returned. Welcome back. We may end up in yeah, the, the octopus actually. can see way more colors than we can. Yeah, actually, what, what it's not even can. octopus. Have you heard of the rainbow um, shrimp or whatever? Um, oh, that thing. That, that thing can incredible. see more than anything. Yeah, it's the most incredible thing in the world. Imagine we're we're going to talk about things. I mean, yeah. there's a, there is people that are like that, that are kind of like that that are what are they called um 
they see more color of those and hey emily i i, I can't can remember the word the does anybody know what i'm talking about jazz. whether like synthetics or something like that i can't remember the word for it yeah i can't remember yeah, what talk about Desserts. But they like hear, they literally can first. see sound and see it as a picture and a pattern oh, and all oh, these sorry. other things in there and they see it in color and it's, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah, and they make for really good artists. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, there's a reason why more women are getting hired into the gaming industry and all these art industries and directing is because oh. Mo more women see more a, a lot more color than men can. Yes, all men are slightly colorblind to a certain degree. Right. Some more than others, but we so, all are. I'm not putting that out there that women. It's no. it's funny well, to understand how that happens. If, like, what if we could all be on the same page in terms of like like that? Like that's what I'm saying is is I think gene like like genetic engineering could really I worry about genetic bring engineering. a certain level of quality that like wouldn't have been possible before. But the only issue with genetic engineering and it's also has to do with like stuff like prosthetics and stuff is is it if we're not in a society by then where the ultra rich are going to be the only ones to have it, then it's, it could potentially be problematic. Because then if the ultra rich are all like immortal gods, then we're all fucked. Exactly. Every, everybody should be in, in an ideal society. Everybody would be on par genetically or whatever yeah all right hey uh, guys while we mm -hmm. i can, can continue this conversation uh for now i gotta stop recording and i actually i'm actually gonna have to break away because it's time for emily to get her meds and her dessert and it's already nine o'clock and i've been recording for oh, two wow. hours <laughs> all right, all right. Awesome. See ya. that was fun dude so you know all right, I'm going to talk into the camera for a minute just to wrap things up, and I'm going to leave the channel temporarily, so without background noise. But thank you guys right. for contributing to the talk, and maybe if we enjoy thank it, you. we'll do something like that later, too. No Absolutely. Problem. Anytime. Count me in, man. All right. I'm here. And I am signing out a voice now. Daddy, look. Bye. Okay. Oh. All right, so that was it. That was the video. That was... Uh, it started as time travel, evolved into other topics. Um, it's something that we may do in the future. I want to give a special shout out to Vasky, to Honkerton, to Gizmo, uh, to Sureview for her contributions, and Hello. to Skinny Fat Percy when they came in. Uh, we are all part of the Shinies and Lucky Juice Discord where we talk about everything from what we talked about now, a lot of game stuff for World of Warcraft and theories, Warcrafting and such. So. Look at my Jamie. Awesome. You want to show them your jammies? Come here. Really quick, show them your jammies. You're good. Let's pull this part up a little bit, though. Okay. These are her jammies. Sit up so they can see. Ready? These are my... These are my over reindeer jammies. <laughs> All right. Go sit on the tablet for a minute. Daddy's going to wrap up, okay? And then you hit meds and dessert. So, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, you know... I thought it was a good video. Hopefully the audio stays as good. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll get permission. If I get permission, I'll put the link in the Discord. You can join in and have conversations, etc. If you're going to leave comments, please be respectful in the comments. I will be moderating them, not for opinions, but for content. Uh, other than that, have a good day. And this is me signing out. And I'm going to look at over here because I'm not going to edit.